Now there are two main reasons you put an air intake kit in your car. The first one is to optimize airflow. That is to make sure that the engine is never starved for the air it needs to combine with fuel. The second reason is to get a cooler temperature on that air. Let's start with the optimized airflow. You need to make sure that breathing is free because there is so little time for a cylinder to be filled. Between 0.02 and 0.006 seconds, depending on the engine's RPM. Anything impeding that airflow means it doesn't completely fill the cylinder with air and gas, and that is reduced volumetric efficiency. When it comes to cooling the air, that is important too because if you recall from high school science class, cooler air is denser air. Denser air has more oxygen molecules in a cubic inch. More oxygen combines better with the fuel to get more power out of every time you fill and fire the cylinder. This is what air intake kits are all about. Now, of course, I'd love to install an air intake kit or just about anything on an F40, but I don't think it needs the help. However, our photographer Celso has an 06 Tahoe with the big V8. It could use the help. Let's do it. Bring it in. Here we go. Don't lose a mirror. <laughs> you got it. Well, you just got it. Okay. Looks good. Celso, this won't hurt a bit. <laughs> Okay, we'll start by removing the factory air intake system, which you can see is a whole lot of plastic dreck. Okay, first thing in the airflow is this air box right here. This is where the air filter lives. I'm gonna disconnect the mass airflow sensor. And then if I lift this off and pull off the lid here, this is your traditional air filter, which is this sort of pleated paper thing. You can't see through that, right? I mean, you're gonna see a big difference when I put the new one in. This is rather dense and air gets through here rather slowly. And down here is the bottom where that thing sits. And I want you to see this. These are the intake nozzles on the old air box. And notice what they breathe through. A couple of holes punched in the sheet metal here on the inside fender well. It gets air from basically down the right side of the fender. It's a little bit occluded because the air's got a tortured 90 degree path to make up a narrow channel here. So that's gonna improve our airflow right there by getting rid of this turn, this corner. Okay, now I pull off the electronic connector for what's called the mass airflow sensor. That's this guy right here. Let me try and remove that because this part we're going to keep. A mass airflow sensor, you can just see right through there. It's got a screen to bring down turbulence on the front and then on the back it's got electronic vanes that can measure the volume of air that is rushing across this thing. It's the first piece of electronics that tell the engine how much air is on its way to the throttle body, which is where the real intake begins. We're going to put this back in. Now the last big piece we got to get rid of is this big kind of ductwork, this plastic plenum. I've loosened it up from the throttle body right there. You can look in there and see the big butterfly valve, which is the beginning of the fuel air mixture chain. We're not going to screw with that. That's serious stuff. But this is a large, very convoluted thing that has all kinds of warming and cooling chambers in it, which we're going to get rid of. And this may change some of the cold weather behavior of the vehicle. Okay, so what we've done now is we've removed this big kind of occluded air box with that pleated filter and we've built up this heat shield. This is going to be our new replacement for the air box and I've mounted the mass airflow sensor on it. And this thing just sits down on some studs here. Notice how much more of a free breathing apparatus it is than what came out. Okay. And now from the heat shield and mass airflow sensor, we're gonna put on this little coupling that's getting us to the other key part of this, a great big pipe, big diameter, very gentle curve, and not a bunch of chambers off of it where uh, a turbulence can build up and impede the flow into the throttle body. So all in, this will take you about an hour. It's not a difficult job. It's one that requires that you fit and pre-fit things to make sure that the clearances are all good. An important two points, keep all your old parts just in case. And secondly, don't leave anything inside this apparatus, not a washer, not a nut, nothing. Because after the filter, there's no other gatekeeper that keeps things from being sucked into the engine. The fastest way to a $10,000 bad weekend is to suck a nut or a washer into your head. Now parts like this always have these hot rod stickers that come with them. I don't stick them on my car, instead I use them as a contact gauge. Take a piece of it, put it upside down here with the sticky side up, and then pull your hood down if you want to check clearance. And if it doesn't stick to the top of the hood, you know you've got at least a little bit of an air space there and you're not rubbing on the underlayment and the heat shield.
Okay, now the last part, which is putting in the only service element and the coolest looking part, well, maybe that pipe is, and that is the air filter. Notice how different that is from what came out. Completely different shape. This guy you can't see through. This guy, it's a little hard to tell, but if you look inside here, far more breathable. This is an oil impregnated material, so it's not as thick because the oil helps to draw dirt out. You service this thing once in a blue moon, you wash it and re-oil it. Probably almost never. Let's put this guy in and see how this thing runs. Okay, our filter is snugged up, so let's see what we've accomplished. We've nailed all of our goals by getting a much more cool and unobstructed airflow. Cooler here because we have a metal heat shield, a little more air around it. It's not so obstructed because it's not coming out of this tortured little turn here in the fender well. Graceful, large diameter pipe. So overall, we should have a cooler, easier flowing intake to get to the throttle body and into the mechanicals of the engine. But let's see if it drives or sounds any different. So we're on the freeway. You hear oh, it, right? This is different. Wow. <laughs> What are you hearing? More throat the, this? Yeah. 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 Sounds this good. Is definitely right? different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's because you move that big cone filter we put mm -hmm. in there. There's not just air going into it, but there's also noise coming back through it. Uh, so engine noise that was normally trapped. It's a good sound. Yeah. yeah. Very different. Yeah. Here we are, 3,000 RPM. So if we get a chance, yeah. open it up a little bit, see if you feel any more power, any more torque. It says right here, this kit's guaranteed to increase horsepower. So. <laughs> I mean, this is what I think is the placebo effect. People put these things in and they go, oh yeah, it feels faster. That's it, so right there. Yeah. And a little more torque. I mean, you also might find a little better gas mileage. Not dramatic. You get a one or two MPG maybe if you're really monitoring your gas mileage carefully. I guess for a car this size, it's always anything is <laughs> going. Anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Cooley. Oh, so? Sounds good. Pleasure's mine. You got my usual 30 30 guarantee. You got 30 it. yards or 30 minutes. We've <laughs> actually passed both, so you're out of warrant. <laughs> Now here's why Celso didn't find his Tahoe is night and day different after putting in the intake kit. These are dyno results from a vehicle like his with a kit like that. Here's horsepower going up from 249 to 257. That's not night and day. Here's the torque difference, 245 to 253 foot-pounds. Again, a little over eight foot-pounds or so, but notice on both of these, the improvement is on the high end of the RPM range where factory intake systems tend to make the engine run out of air. That's very common. This helps address that. This is really good for high RPM run. Oh, by the way, Celso grabbed me in the hallway the other day and said he's actually feeling the power and torque improvement since we put that air kit on more and more as he drives the vehicle. So that's good news, as is the fact that no parts have fallen off yet.